Okay, hi everyone. This is Joel Friedlander here. Thanks for coming in. It's exactly one o'clock. I'm going to do a little housekeeping and that will give uh, our late attendees a chance to pile in and grab their seats. There's quite a few people in here already. Thanks for showing up early. I really appreciate that. So we won't have any delay getting going. Now listen, we're going to have a fantastic presentation for you today. I've been over this with Nina. It's really packed with useful information. And uh, at the end, we're going to tell you about a project Nina and Tracy and I have been working on the last couple of months that's really going to make your life a lot easier. But uh, I want to do some housekeeping first. First of all, everyone on this call is muted. And that's because if we unmuted several hundred people, it, you really wouldn't be able to hear Nina talking. So that's not really a good uh, thing. So if you have questions during the webinar, feel free to ask them by typing into the question box uh, on the um, go to webinar control panel it's floating probably on the right side of your screen and you can type in there we'll try to answer them if there are unanswered questions we will have a Q&A session at the completion of the presentation so if people have questions you want to stick around you're more than welcome to we'll try to answer every single question you have uh, I've seen already someone has typed in that they have no audio. I want to let you know um, we have tested all this out. We've been on GoToWebinar for quite a while already today. Everything is working perfectly. If you are having a problem with GoToWebinar, either the video or the audio, uh, please contact GoToWebinar and their health support, their help, uh, help or support line, and they will help you out because the problem is at your end. Everything is working fine here. And uh, thank you, Bianca and Carol, for chiming in that your Eddy audio is working well. I also want to let you know that we will be sending out a replay link to this webinar after it's completed. I hope to have that out tonight. If not, it'll be coming out first thing in the morning. Um, so that's what I have to get started, I want, don't want to delay any longer. People are still coming in, but um, we are ready to get started. So let me introduce you to our presenter today. I have a feeling many of you already know Nina Amir. She is an eight-time Amazon best-selling author. She's the author of such books as How to Blog a Book and the Author Training Manual, both extremely valuable for any author or independent publisher. Nina's a speaker and a blogger, and she helps creative people move from idea to action, positively impacting the world as writers, bloggers, authorpreneurs, and blogpreneurs. That's a kind of a hard word to say, blogpreneur. Now, Nina provides coaching services to her clients, some of whom have sold over 300,000 copies of their books, They've landed deals with major publishing houses and have created thriving businesses around their books and their publishing. Nina is also the founder of National Nonfiction Writing Month, National Book Blogging Month, and the Nonfiction Writers University. As a hybrid author, Nina herself has published 16 books, and she has had as many as four of her books at once on the Amazon Top 100 list. I think that's pretty incredible. Please help me in welcoming Nina Amir. And over to you, Nina. Thank you so much, Joel. That was an awesome introduction. And I am honored to be here today speaking to you and to everyone else. So we're going to just get right into it because there's a lot of content I want to cover today. So I think Joel's done his thing. And I'm going to just head right into our topic today, which is how to turn your blog into a book production machine. Something pretty exciting. Okay, so here we go. So what I see is that most writers just want to write, and that's a pretty big problem because in today's world you can't just write and expect to succeed as a writer or an author. Most writers don't want to promote, and you simply have to, and it's not just about promoting your book once it's been launched. It's about promoting beforehand. You have to build that author platform you hear so much about, and that is basically pre-promotion of your book. 
work. So promotion is a necessity, but most writers and most authors that I run into just don't want to promote. Now, bloggers write and promote all the time. The successful bloggers are sharing their blog posts uh, on all the social networks, and that is promotion. And their blog is a way to promote. Matter of fact, the blog is probably the best way you can build author platform and promote yourself, your products, your services, and your books. But for bloggers, they typically feel overwhelmed by the idea of writing a full-length book rather than a short blog post. You know, blog posts can be as short as 300 words. Some people write as many as 1,500. But typically, you know, your blog post is going to be in that 300 to 700 um, word range. And so for a blogger who's used to writing short, a full-length book can feel really overwhelming. Now, the easiest way that I have found to write a book and to promote your book all at the same time so that you're getting all that those jobs done at once and you don't have to struggle with the idea with the the fact that you know you don't have time to promote and to write is to blog a book and I want to go back to what I just said because that's the excuse I hear all the time is I don't have time to promote and to write my book okay but you can if you blog a book you can actually write and promote all at the same time. Now, if you are a blogger, the easiest way for you to write your book and to do it quickly and easily without all that overwhelm is to book a blog, to actually turn your blog content into a book. So what's the difference between blogging a book and booking a blog? These are two terms I'm going to be using a lot um, during the course of this presentation, and so we need to understand them. So if you blog a book, what you're doing is you are setting out to intentionally write your book from scratch on the internet in post-sized bits. So you develop a content plan and you break that book, uh, your, your, your book, into these small bits, these 300 to let's say 1,000 word pieces and you go ahead and you write them probably in Word or in Scrivener and then you copy and paste them into your blog program hopefully wordpress.org and you're publishing them there okay and you're doing this intentionally consciously and you know you're writing a book on your blog when you book a blog what you're doing is repurposing existing blog content you didn't write it originally with the thought of creating a book. You are just blogging. So this is what happens with most bloggers. They're just blogging. Then suddenly they decide they want to reuse or recycle their blog posts into a book. So that's booking a blog. You repurpose existing blog content that you didn't write with any thought of creating a book into a book. So hopefully that makes sense to everyone. Okay, so I want to talk about why you might want to consider blogging your book into existence. We will then talk about booking your blog, okay? So first I'm going to deal with the whole process of blogging your book and why you want to do it, and then we're going to shift over to booking your blog and why you would want to do that and how you would do it. Okay, so first off, a blog allows you to publish as you write. I was at a conference one time, and uh, it was for bloggers, and uh, we the person up on the stage or the podium said, uh, you know, if you're a blogger and you're also an author, raise your hand. And very few people raised their hand. And uh, that person at the podium said, everyone in here should raise their hand because all of you are authors. And the reason is that there's a little button that you push after you write your blog post and you're ready for it to go live. And it says publish. So if you want to be a published author or you want to be a self-published author, you know, traditional self-publisher doesn't matter. What you want to be doing is publishing as you write and be, be calling yourself an author already. Number two is a blog book gives you exposure and built your author platform. That author platform, um, I, I hope most of you know that term, but just very um, briefly, <clears throat> excuse me, it's, uh, it's your built-in readership for your book in your target market. So it's, it's everything you do to accumulate fans, followers, um, people on your email list, subscribers to your blog, all of that because those are people 
who are interested in what you're doing and they may potentially buy your book. So that is an author platform. And according to Nielsen Book Scan, the average US book now sells less than 250 copies per year and less than 3,000 copies over its lifetime. It's a really sad statistic, but it's true. But with a blog, you can reach 300 to 1,000 readers in a day. You might have 3,000 readers a month, and that is an author platform. So that's very important to keep in mind and a great reason to be blogging a book. A blog book also gives you expert status. So for those of you writing nonfiction, um, this is very important. 56% of all bloggers say that their blog has helped them establish a position as a thought leader within an industry. That means as an authority. And 58% say that they're better known in their industry because of their blog. If you write nonfiction, you want to be known as a thought leader, as an expert. And this is a way to do it. So for instance, Darren Rouse, who has a blog called Pro Blogger, he started out just blogging and he ended up a traditionally published author with a book by the same name, Pro Blogger. He co-authored the book with Chris Garrett, who happens to have written the foreword to the first edition of my book, How to Blog a Book. And Chris actually has uh, had a course he used to teach called Authority Blogging. But Darren just started out blogging about all kinds of things. And then he decided that he wanted to be a professional blogger and he wanted to make his living as a blogger. And he set out to just do that. He had two blogs, one on photography and one that was all about how he was becoming a professional blogger. And in the process of blogging about how to become a professional blogger, Darren became the expert. This is not unlike what Joel has done with the book designer. And I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Joel, uh, but I know that you started out with the site and you became the expert by blogging. Well, yeah, and blogging gave me the perfect opportunity, Nina, to um, communicate my expertise in book design and publishing, stuff I had built up over many years, with a wider audience. And that was really what the secret of blogging was for me. Because instead of just telling one or two people or going to a local meeting and telling 20 people, I could communicate to thousands of people with my blog. Right. Right. And I did pretty much the same thing with my blog, How to Blog a Book, where I actually was the guinea pig for this whole process. And I blogged a book about blogging a book. And in five months, I had number one Google status. That means that if you Googled anything about or searched for anything about blogging a book, blog to book deals, how to blog a book, you found me in the number one spot in the search engine results pages. That immediately gave me expert status. And people began to see me as the expert on blogging books. So this is very, very important. Now, those of you who are writing fiction may be asking, how does this pertain to me? Well, if you begin to look at the novels you want to write and how the topics in those novels and the themes in those novels go together, how they how they correspond, you can then begin to become an expert uh, in a specific area, even though you're writing fiction. So if all your books are um, have, uh, let's say, a dog in them, um, you can actually be blogging about dogs uh, on a frequent basis and bring your site up in the search engine results pages for the topic of dogs. So that's kind of broad, but it gives you the general idea. So I, I always recommend that, uh, non, that fiction writers think about them, so how they might even cross over into nonfiction to make themselves experts. And here's a okay. tip, Nina, from one of our attendees, Carol Buchanan, who writes historical westerns. And she says she blogs about the history underpinning the western environment, and she also has an email newsletter about western history. So it works for That's perfect. Yeah, that is a perfect, perfect example of how to become an expert when you're a novelist. And when you're an expert, you can actually get way more speaking gigs and you're going to sell way more books at the back of the room when you can go out and speak as an expert, even your novels. So I really highly recommend that you do that. You know, Think about how to cross over. Okay, number four, a blog book gets your writing read. There's always this question, why do writers write? And, and we tend to answer that with because we must, you know, we're just writers and we have to write. But I actually think it's because you want to be read. And if you uh, blog while 
initially you may not have any readers except your friends and family, if you continue blogging on a continuous basis and in a focused manner and frequently enough, you actually will begin to get readers. And just like in the field of dreams, those readers will come in larger and larger quantities. Number five, a blog book allows you to test market your book. Blogging is a really effective and cheap way to test market a book idea. You can just start a blog, you can begin to blog on a particular topic, even as we said as a novelist, you could blog about this, you know, history, uh, Western history. You could blog about, um, if you have a novel about uh, tra time travel, you can write about all the different um, uh, you know, places in England or all over the world where there are stories of time travel. Uh, it doesn't matter, but as a, a nonfiction writer, of course, you're blogging about your topic. But as you do that, you can see if you begin to get readers. If you begin to get readers, then it's a successfully test marketed um, book idea. Uh, and a matter of fact, publishers feel that way, and that's why so many blog-to-book deals have happened uh, in the past decade or so. It's because successfully a successful blog is as close to a sure bet as a publisher can find, and I actually heard the, the publisher of Hyperion say that, that never before actually blogs was there a way to test market a book idea. The blogs do that. And so uh, if you don't like what you've been blogging about or it's not working, you're not getting the readers and you've done the promotion, you've given it time because it takes time and it takes promotion, you can just delete it. It's not really a big deal. It's Like I said, it's, a, it's an effective and a cheap way to test market that book idea. But if your idea is working, you're getting readers and subscribers and people commenting, then you know you've actually got a really good idea out there that maybe even a traditional publisher would be interested in. Number six, a blog book provides a daily writing commitment. So you can't expect your blog to succeed if you blog once a month or once every two weeks and you don't actually have a schedule that you keep to. You have to write regularly. So you create a schedule and you stick to it. And this is very important. And I know Joel wrote very consistently initially. And for me, I have written very consistently on all my blogs um, over the years. Um, matter of fact, I only just this month cut back to once a week on two of my blogs. I have blogged as much as five days a week on some of my blogs. Number seven, a blog book allows you to get feedback on your writing. This for me is one of the most important reasons to blog a book. A lot of people join um, critique groups and they find that they're writing historical fiction and everybody else is writing nonfiction or everyone's writing um, uh, thrillers and they're writing romance. You can't get good feedback that way. But when you blog a book, the people who are commenting on your book are your actual readers. These are the real people who would buy your book. They are reading your blog because they're interested in your book and your topic and they are giving you feedback. You can survey them, you can put in a forum, you can ask at the end of the blog post you know, for their feedback. This is a wonderful way to have actual beta readers as you write your book. Number eight, a blog book ensures you complete your manuscript. So, how many people do you know who are writing books who haven't, you know, have, are halfway through their manuscript and they never get any farther than that? Or, you know, they're, they have two chapters to go and they just can't get themselves to finish or they're just not finding the time. That doesn't happen when you blog a book because your readers become your accountability partners. Accountability works so great, um, you know, for, for getting things done when you say you're going to do it. So if you put on your blog, I am blogging a book, you are, you, you, basically need to keep going because your readers are waiting to turn the page. Every blog post is like another page in the book and they're waiting and if you stop uh, before you finish you're going to fail publicly and nobody likes to be embarrassed by failing publicly. So you will be more likely to keep going to the end if you blog your book. Number nine, a blog book lets you show what you've got. Okay, the internet is all about, you know, and social networks are all about um, getting people to know, like, and trust us. And so we give away a lot of great content, including book content. 
Now, you don't have to give it all away, but you want to get people to, uh, to read what you have uh, to, to say, what you have to share, so that they want more of it. So it's a bit like giving them um, some of the cake, but not all of it. So it tastes so yummy, they want to come back and get some more, you know, to eat some more. So that's what you're trying to do with, as you blog a book. Number 10, finally, a blog book lets you and your blog get discovered. You can be discovered by readers who will buy your self-published book, and you can also be discovered by agents and publishers if you would like to have a traditionally published book. Um, so all of this can happen as you're blogging a book, and these are just a few examples of books that were successfully published, either traditionally or self-published, and Joel's book is on there too. Um, uh, and Nina? Because his was a, a booked blog. So these are both booked blogs and blog books. Yes. And, uh, you know, about a, a year or so, because uh, I had a question from somebody about uh, would publishers uh, avoid books that were blogged because the content isn't fresh? And I responded that that's not actually how it's working in practice because there are a lot of uh, blog to book deals going on right now. And I just wanted to mention the fact that my book, A Self-Publisher's Companion, about a year after I published it, I got a call from a publisher who wanted to acquire the book. It wasn't even fresh in a publishing sense. It had been out for over a year. And uh, we went around and around. In the end, I decided not to do that. But I want you to know that people are out there watching these kind of books, and they know which books have appeal. Right. And, and that's a good question um, from, from our viewer. Um, the fact is that, uh, again, that if you have a successful blog, they're not going to care that the content was on the blog. And there is a plan, um, and I'm going to just say it now in case I forget later, but when you plan out your blogged book, you want to plan to have about 20% of, of your content that doesn't show up on the blog because a publisher will want to have at least a little new content to entice readers. But it's amazing how your readers will still buy these books and publishers will still buy them. And um, the only caution I would give is to the fiction writers uh, because the um, publisher, if you're going to traditionally publish, the uh, publishers who publish fiction don't typically like uh, previously published work. So what I re recommend for novelists is if you want to self-publish, this is great. If you want to traditionally publish, do this for your first novel to gain, uh, gain that author platform and to pr prove that you have a readership. Then land a deal for your second book. In all likelihood, the publisher is going to come back and publish that first book because you showed that it was successful. And they're going to, you know, as, as your second book succeeds, they're going to want the first one. So I would just put that caution out there. Um, also, just along these same lines, I wasn't going to get into this, but um, just know that if you want to publish eBooks on Kindle, that you don't um, want to be using blogged material in the Kindle Select program. In the Kindle program, it's 100% okay, but the Kindle Select program will ask you to take your content down. That's just a little tip. Okay, so let's get into how we do this. Seven things you need to do before you blog a book. So this is actually preparation for blogging your book. First, you have to choose a subject. And I know that sounds really stupid, but the thing is that if you're going to blog a book from start to finish, you have to keep in mind that once you finish the book, you have to keep blogging. Your blog doesn't stop. Now, I know this from experience because when I started How to Blog a Book, I had other blogs. And so How to Blog a Book dot com was just an additional blog for me to keep up with and when I finished blogging the book I kind of wiped my forehead and went phew I'm done and I slacked off but guess what when I slacked off in publishing posts I began to lose readership and that was not what I wanted so I had to come up very quickly with a plan to keep blogging so as you choose your subject choose that subject for your book with the, keeping in mind that you have to blog about this topic for many years to come. Now the next thing you want to do is to create a business plan for your book. Any marketable book, actually just any book that you want to have sell well, sell above the average 250 copies per year, needs a business plan. 
And I wrote about this extensively in my book, The Author Training Manual. There is one chapter on this topic in How to Blog a Book, but I wrote about it to a great extent because it's so necessary for you to um, come up with a pitch, a uh, list of benefits for your, you know, that you're going to provide to your readers. Um, to do a market analysis, to do a competitive analysis, so that you will know um, how to make your book stand out from the other books in the market, and then to go from there into the actual planning out of your content. The reason the business plan is so important is because that is what uh, traditional publishers use to evaluate whether a book is marketable, whether it's going to sell. So if you self-publish, you need, you're the publisher, you need to evaluate your book in the same way that an acquisitions editor would evaluate it, and that is with a business plan. Now you might want to call it a book proposal. It's the same thing. It's the same information, but it's a way for you to evaluate if your book has what it takes to sell well in the category. So you have to have a business plan no matter how you plan to publish your book. But if you're going to self-publish, it's enormously important to have that business plan. And if you traditionally publish, it's going to be required. And even for novelists today, more and more publishers want a business plan. So once you have gone through that process of of the business plan for your book and you've looked at the competition and the market and you have uh, maybe done some of the other things like um, looked at uh, what it's going to cost you to produce this book and uh, set up some goals like when you're going to actually release the book, um, what you need to do to develop your author platform. This is all part of the business plan. Once this is all done, you can actually hone your subject and you hone that subject that you chose primarily by looking at the competition and, the, and um, your market and trying to make sure that you produce something that is unique and necessary in the category in the bookstore where your book will be placed. You also want to hone the subject so that it is targeting the market and giving your ideal reader exactly what they want. From there you go on to map out your book's content because now you've honed your subject, you know exactly what you're going to write about and you are now going to uh, break your book down into uh, post-sized bits, which is the next step. That's step number six. You break your content into post-sized pieces. Okay, so let's look at what that would look like. If you are going to blog a book, you start out with your actual book subject and you start planning out your chapters. Now, as I said, you're planning post-sized bits. So if chapter, if you're doing a nonfiction book, usually nonfiction books have some subheadings or subtopics. Each one of those subtopics might be the length of a blog post. So you can think of it like a blog post title. From there, you have to think about whether you need more content. So maybe you have a subheading and one blog post is enough to cover it. Maybe you write 700 words and that's all you need. But maybe you have another, or maybe each one of your subheadings or subtopics requires more blog posts, requires maybe 2,000 words. And so you may need many blog posts. So at this point, you are actually planning out your blog posts post by post. You're planning out the titles. So you are going to actually have a plan that looks like what you see here, which is a blog post title for each section that you're going to write. This is breaking down your book post by into post size bits. And you'll do that for every chapter. So it's a very detailed content plan. It's not just chapter one is this topic, chapter two is that topic. This is actually a a list of every blog post you will write. Now if you're writing fiction, it's going to look similar except your chapter will be broken down into scenes and each one of those scenes might have a blog post title. Now if your scene is rather long, you might have to break it down further into more blog posts. And um, it can be difficult to write these scenes in short bits and pieces, but you want to start thinking about, could I have a description as a blog post? Would that be enough to compel someone in and out of that blog post? Or do I need to have more? That's why sometimes when you're blogging a novel, um, your uh, blog posts might be longer. They might be 1,000 to 1,500 words in order to um, actually cover a whole scene. But if you can break it down 
into the introduction of chapter A or some dialogue between character A and character B or the description of the crime scene or a flashback. These are all things that will um, easily lend themselves to a blog post and you just have to always compel the reader into to each post and out so they continue flowing from one scene to the next. And I can tell you that a lot of novelists um, have told me that this makes them better writers and it makes their books better because they're constantly trying to hook the reader from one little bit of content to the next. Okay, so how long will it take you to do this? How long does it take to blog a book? This is up to you, really. And I can tell you that when I blogged how to blog a book, I didn't find that five months, which is what it took me, was long enough to track the kinds of readers I wanted and or the numbers of readers I wanted. And I was blogging three to four times a week. So you have to look at the length of your book first. How long do you think it will be? And then you have to look at the duration of the book blogging project. How many weeks or months do you plan to blog the book? So I just told you that I didn't think five months was enough for me to really accrue the uh, kind of um, readership or platform I wanted. So you have to think about that. Then once you know how, uh, lo how long your book is and how long you want to be blogging your project, let's say nine months, um, you can figure out how many blog posts you need to publish per week. So here we have a calculation that of 50, a, a manuscript of 50,000 words. If each of your posts averages 400 words, let's say, you just divide 50,000 by 400 and you get 125 posts. Okay, so if you want to finish blogging the book in six months, you're going to divide those 125 posts by six months and you have 20 posts per month. So that's five posts per week. Now it's time to actually come up with a schedule and you're going to schedule it out month by month. Okay, so I just added some months here and if you take a look at this mind map, you're going to see that I have added in five posts per week for the month of January. Um, but you would have five posts per week for every month for those the amount of months you're going to be blogging. And now each one of these posts where it says post one, post two, post three would have a title and you would begin dropping in those blog posts that you mapped out for your book. Now, you can blog lots of books. They don't have to be long. You can blog a 50,000 word book or you can blog a 10,000 word book or a 20,000 books uh, word book. So you can blog lots and lots of books by just blogging theor uh, series. I have a book I published um, uh, that is just 10 blog posts. Um, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, with these days, I think you, you need around 4,000 or 4,500 words for an ebook. So just blog a series and turn it into an ebook. And then rinse and repeat. So you can actually be blogging many, many books per year if you desire to do that. So the final step, uh, and I'm assuming you all have a blog, so I didn't make that a step, but the final step, step number seven, is to promote. You have to promote these blog posts in every way possible. Uh, if you don't promote, there's no way to know if, you're, if your blog is successful or not. Yes, if you write in a consistent manner, often, in a, and folk, in a focused manner as well. So you're writing blog posts focused on your topic and you're, you have a schedule where you're writing frequently and consistently so you don't break from your schedule you will begin to move up in the search engine results pages and that will make you your blog more discoverable and your book more discoverable but in order to really promote your book and to get traffic to your blog and to see if this is this is working for you you have to be sharing on social networks uh, you have to think about using every tool possible video audio um, uh, you know, even traditional media. So think about that. You, you have to implement that into your plan. That should be part of your business plan is how will I promote my blog, my blogged book, right? So you have to have a promotion plan in place. Okay, let's go on to booking blogs. Why would you want to book your blog? To so actually create a book from your repurposed posts. I've got six reasons for this. So there are probably more. First of all, bloggers benefit by becoming authors. When you become an author, you increase your expert status. There is just something about being an author where people immediately think of you as an authority and a thought leader. Uh, so having that book 
beyond the blog just changes things for you in that way. You will get more uh, requests to be on podcasts and on radio shows and to guest blog, all of that. It, really, a book is the best business card possible um, to show you're an expert, but also to get more uh, customers uh, and uh, clients. If you are running a business from your blog, uh, you can hand them the book. Um, an ebook is nice, but a you know, you can email it to people, but a printed book is, is even better. And basically, you get another title, and the title is author, which is very important. It's going to help you uh, with that expert status when you can say you are a blogger and a published author. Number two, you can reach a new audience with your work. So when you're blogging, all you have are online readers. Uh, and, and they have to go to your blog to read um, or click through links you know, to get to your blog to read. But um, when you publish a book, you can get offline readers. You can get readers who are downloading your eBooks to their Kindle or their Nook, um, and uh, they can read that way, or they can actually buy your printed books. So you're gaining a whole different group of people who may not read blogs, which is very important. It's increasing your reach considerably. Also, uh, there are people who just prefer a different format. They don't want to read online or they uh, don't like reading blogs. So you want to provide uh, different types of media for different types of people, and a book will do that for you. Number three, um, booking a blog is really the easiest way to write a book if you're a blogger because you've already got most of your content for your manuscript. You've been blogging for a couple of years, let's say. You have a ton of content. So writers are often, often struggling to write content, which is kind of ironic, but bloggers are churning out content all the time. So you've already got most of your content for your manuscript right there on your blog. You just need to find the right posts possibly fill in some gaps that are missing with new content and compile your project. You know, put it together into a Word document. You can start in Scrivener if you like, but you're going to compile it into a document that you can then turn into a book. Number four, you might be sitting on a real gold mine. You have content, you can make it work for you. Um, those blog posts can be sold, right? They can become a source of income if you turn them into books. So your readers will buy that. It's amazing. They, they, I wrote a blog post about why readers will buy, will purchase books that are blogged content, and um, I don't have time to get into all of them, but they, they, they love to have a, a um, souvenir of their favorite, favorite blogger. If you add a little bit of new content, they're going to want that. They're going to want to read it in a new format. There are lots of reasons that they want to read your blogged content in a different format. So make it work for you and monetize what you have by creating books out of your blog. The other thing is you really can work smarter and not harder. There are a lot of bloggers who are thinking, I want to write a book and it's just something else I have to do and I don't have time. I'm already blogging, you know, three days a week and I just, I can't manage writing a book. Well, you don't have to. <laughs> you don't have to write another book. Just go to your blog and turn that content into a book. And then, not only that, you can start blogging books from now on. So you really can, um, you don't have to complain about being too busy. You, you can get this done very easily because you have the content and you can produce the content. And number six, you can focus on what's working. As I said, a successful blog is a successfully test marketed book idea. So look at which posts you have that have generated the most interest. Do you have a lot of them in that category? This is an easy way for you to know in advance whether you have a book idea in your blog. Not only that, if your blog is thriving, you know that you have lots of content there. So just focus on what's working and turn that into a book. Okay, so let's go through the four things you need to do before you book a blog. So again, this is preparation. The first thing is to create the best possible book. You are not going to plan out a book that's the easiest to compile from your existing posts. That is not going to produce a book that will sell. Okay, you are going to plan out the best possible book you could write if you wrote it from scratch. Okay, did you hear that? 
you're going to plan out the best possible book you could write, the most marketable book that you could write if you wrote it from scratch. Okay, then you're going to go back and you're going to create a business plan for this book. Okay, you're going to do all the things I described before, the competitive analysis, the market analysis, you're going to use that to hone your topic, you're going to figure out a promotion plan, all these things. Then you are going to map out your book's content. Now I use the word map rather than plan because I like to mind map this, but you could just plan out your book's content. Maybe it's an outline, but this is the content for the best book you could write. Then, and only then, do you search your blog post for the, ex your blog, I'm sorry, for the existing posts that you have that might work in this book, okay? Once you've done that, you will look to see what you have and whether there are gaps in the content that you need to fill with new material, new material you're going to write, okay? So it may be that you thought all the content was there on your blog, but it may, that may not be the case, so you have to keep uh, and keep an open mind that you will still ha may have to write some new content. And you may want to do that anyway in order to entice readers to buy your book. So here is uh, what it would start to look like if you were planning out the best book you could write. So you have your, your idea for a, a, blog, a booked blog, you plan out the best book, and you say, here are the chapters that I would... Um, include in the book, and here are the points I would want to make in those chapters. Now, I'm going to go to my blog and I'm going to start looking for blog posts that correspond with these points I want to make. So you're searching your blog using a variety of different methods and you're going to come up with the post title and the URL and you're going to drop it in to your plan, whether it's a mind map like this or whether it's um, just an outline. Now you notice that there are some blank spaces here where there are no post titles or URLs. That's where you are going to add new content, okay? So you have content that may not fit at all, you have content that does fit your plan, and you begin to drop all this in. You find the posts and then you figure out where you need to write new content. And this is how you flesh out your project. All right, can any book become a blog, or I'm sorry, any blog become a book? No, not any blog can become a book. It has to be a viable book proposition, and that means you have to see the big picture, okay? You have to look at your blog and say, is there really anything marketable in here? Is there a, a manuscript in here that would sell? And to go back to my, when I misspoke, can any book become a blog? Not necessarily either. Um, I can tell you that I tried blogging the author training manual after I had written the manuscript without planning to blog it, and it was much more difficult because I hadn't written it in blog post sized pieces. It required a lot of work. So you have to really plan to blog a book to do it successfully, and your blog has to actually be, uh, you know, or the content that you want to use from your blog has to be viable, it has to be marketable, or your book won't sell. So I'm going to leave you at this point with a challenge. The challenge is to turn your blog into what I call a book production machine. By blogging books and booking blogs, you can do both. Uh, because the likelihood is if you blog a book, you're going to continue blogging. And so you're going to have more content that you can turn into a book later on that you can book. And if you've been, book, been blogging, you can book your blog and you can start blogging books, lots of them. So in either case, you can be churning out books and that blog of yours can be a book production machine. So at this point, um, I want to uh, mention that Joel and I have been working on a way to make both the processes of blogging a book and booking a blog much easier for you. So Joel, do you want to tell everyone about that? Yeah, absolutely, Nina. You know, uh, Nina and I have been talking about blogging books and booking blogs for years now. You want to flip over to our next slide there, Nina? And um, <clears throat> What we decided to do was put together uh, a set of templates because we do a lot of Microsoft Word templates that would actually help people go through this process that Nina just described. You can see there's a bunch of steps 
And of course, it's great to have Nina describing this because she knows this process so intimately. So what we did was we asked Nina if she would put together a set of templates that would specifically lead you through this whole process that she just described. And we've come up with this great product and we call it the How to Blog a Book Template Kit. All the tools you need to turn your blog into a book production machine. And like all our templates, these can be used over and over again. So what's in this product? Well, the first thing is there are 10 handy pre-formatted templates. And uh, we're going to go through those in just a minute, so you'll see exactly what I mean. But this is the core of the product. It actually uh, it contains all of the expert advice that Nina has been talking about on this webinar, plus a lot more, and it puts it right where you need it the most. Uh, also included are 10 samples of uh, completed uh, templates, so you know exactly what it is that Nina is suggesting you do. And I always find this really, really helpful. Like if somebody says, you know, go out and design a Franzit, I want to see what a picture of a Franzit looks like before I start. I'm the same way with cookbooks. Show me a picture of the recipe. So that's what we've done here. We've given you a completed sample so you know exactly where you're going, and that will help you get there. And also included are is a complete 59-page blow-by-blow guide to how to use these templates to turn your blog articles into books or to create a book from blog articles. So this is going to, uh, it's kind of a companion to Nina's excellent uh, book, How to Blog a Book, and I highly re recommend that. But we've decided to put this product together to give you tools to actualize the ideas that Nina talks about in the main book. So that's what's in the How to Blog a Book template kit. Let's see our next slide, Nina. Keep going. Okay, so this is what our templates look like. Oh, sorry. Uh, here you can see <laughs> that uh, these are Microsoft Word documents. They have black text and red text. You can see this is actually template number one, the blog to book ideation template. And it, this is where you basically brainstorm ideas. Now on the template, uh, you'll see that the red text is intended for you to remove because you just open these templates in Microsoft Word in any version of Microsoft Word. It doesn't matter if it's Mac, PC, 2003, 2011. These will open in any version of Microsoft Word. And then when you see them, you can keep, you see the, the text that's in there, and you just take the red text out and substitute your own text from whatever project you're working on. So, uh, for instance, here it says, my market is small, medium, large. You know. Your market is either small, medium, or large, so you could just adjust this based on your own uh, input. So let's look at the next slide, Mina. All right, so these are the 10 templates included. I'm going to ask Nina to walk through these with you because she created them and she's intimately familiar with what's in them. Great. So the first one, as Joel mentioned, is the blog to book ideation template. And it helps you brainstorm your book to blog or blog to book ideas. You make a list of book ideas, add tentative titles and pitches to your top uh, ideas. And you actually pick your, the best idea uh, as your book to blog or blog book project. Uh, the book idea mind mapping template uh, is a printable mind map that you can use to flesh out your best book idea, which you identified using the blog to book ideation template. Uh, then we have the 10 chapter book content plan template, uh, which supports you in the process of transferring the information from your mind mapping template into the structure of a book and leads you through a process to actually plan out all those posts that I showed you that will comprise each chapter in your book and yes every last post so you're prepared to blog your book um, and you'll determine what percent of your planned content actually will remain unpublished and off the blog. The 16-point blog book checklist is exactly what it sounds like, a list of all the things you need to check off or to do to blog a book or book a blog from ideation all the way through creating and editing your manuscript. The book uh, blogging time calculation worksheet offers you an actual math formula you can use to determine the number of weeks it's going to take to complete your book blogging project. 
very important. Okay, categories and tag, tags worksheet. This is going to help you develop 10 to 15 categories for your blog and brainstorm 10 to 20 tags for your blog book and blog content. Um, it, it becomes your filing system for content that you're going to include in your blog book or in general posts that you write um, after you finish blogging the book uh, or even if you're interspersing them throughout you know, your book blogging process. The competitive analysis template leads you through the steps to evaluate competing blogs and books, uh, basically because you're going to be operating in both the blogosphere and the publishing sphere, um, so you have to look at both. Um, you then use this information to help you hone your idea to create the most marketable book possible, one that's going to fill a need in the bookstore category and in your market. Um, you know, I really think this template um, and the next are probably the most valuable because they help create books that sell. Um, and the next one is the market analysis template, which is going to lead you through the steps to evaluate your market from ideal reader to that reader's needs, wants, pain points, questions, problems, and how your book is going to address those issues, uh, which makes it more likely to sell. And that means you have more impact with your story or your information, because you definitely don't want to write a book that doesn't sell. Then we have the monthly blog plan template, and this helps you, uh, helps you create an extended, meaning one, three, six, or 12 month blogging plan for promoting your book once it's finished, and for your blog content in general. Um, additionally, it allows you to start planning out full length books or short books that you can blog. And last, we have the new blog con content template. Um, for those blogging books rather than booking a blog, this, is a temp this template helps you brainstorm the content you plan to write and publish on your blog after you complete your book project. Um, as I said, you won't stop blogging after you finish uh, blogging your book, so you need a plan. But uh, those who already have a blog will find that template quite useful as well. Joel? Okay, so, you know... Joel, are you still with us? I'm still here. Can you hear me, Nina? <laughs> I was typing like crazy, trying to answer everything. I can now. Questions. But, um, all right, we decided uh, also that because the end process of uh, blogging your book or booking your blog is a book manuscript, hey, come on, that's what this is all about, is to, you know, use our writing, get more out of the time we put into it, and uh, make publishable products out of it. So whether you book a blog or blog your book, you're gonna end up with a manuscript. So the only thing you need to make the next step in publishing that manuscript is to make it into a book. So what we've decided to do, uh, and this is um, uh, maybe just a special for this promotional period this week, is we're actually gonna include a special template we put together uh, just to create books from these manuscripts that you're going to be creating. This is one of our standard word templates. They've been used by thousands and thousands of authors to publish successfully on CreateSpace, Lightning Source, Ingram Spark, every other print on demand and ebook uh, venue. And uh, thousands of authors have used them. And we're going to actually include this in this package for people who are interested in acquiring the How to Blog a Book Template Kit. These usually sell for $57. You can see them on my website at bookdesigntemplates.com all day, every day. But uh, we thought that was the one missing link, that if you actually go through this process, you create that finished manuscript, here's the link that will take you to getting it published as a book. All you'll need to do is add a cover. <laughs> Next. Yeah, and I would just I would just add, Joel, before we go on to the next slide, that um, uh, what I didn't really say was that you are going to end up with a, a Microsoft Word document, or maybe it's Pages, or you're doing it out of Scrivener, but you're going to end up with a MS, probably with a Word document in the end, and um, because you're going as you blog your book, you're writing in Word or in Scrivener, wherever, and then cutting, copying and pasting onto your blog, and if you're booking a blog, you're copying and pasting blog posts again either into Scrivener or into Word and you're going to you're going to need a manuscript when it's done in order to go you know, to to publish your book either as an ebook or as a print book so this is a phenomenal addition i think to make this really um 
a complete package. Yeah, and it'll work no matter whether you want to do print, ebooks, or both, because the same template will produce a ebook a file that you can make into an ebook very quickly with a free piece of software, or you can just do right. a PDF and upload it to your print on demand vendor. So we've also added in some really targeted training because uh, you know this all helps. There are a lot of people asking questions on the webinar today who are new to blogging or not quite sure how to get started. So we put in these uh, bonuses. There are three of them. There's a book, a, a short ebook by Nina called Blogging Basics for Authors. You're going to get it in um, several different formats, and Nina usually sells that for $2.99. I believe this is a new book, isn't it, Nina? Yeah, it was just released this month. Okay, it just came out, so you probably haven't seen that yet. We've also included a one-hour teleseminar on this whole subject of how to blog a book. And you're going to get a lot more detail even than we were able to go into today on the exact process, and that's from Nina. And then our third one is an interview that Nina did with me. We sat down and talked about uh, blogging, getting started in blogging, getting traffic to your blog, creating books from your blog. It was really interesting, about a 40 to 45-minute video interview. So we've added all of those to the product, too. So let's flip to the next slide. And here's our complete offer. We're going to get you the template kit, which sells for $57, all those three bonus training items, which sell for $57. We're also going to throw in our two-way print and ebook template to turn your manuscript into a book. That sells for $57. And we're going to give the whole thing to you, if you're interested, this week only for $39. Bucks. Now, I don't think I can make it any less expensive than that. Uh, because this is a huge amount of content, and it's all focused on one thing, and that is to help you get your books done faster and easier by using a blog, whether you're going blog to book or book to blog. It doesn't matter. We've got you covered both ways. Now, on this slide, you can also see down the bottom a uh, URL, a web address, thebookdesigner.com slash blog a book with dashes in it. Now, we're running this because we're very excited about this new product. Nina's put a huge amount of work into this. She's been working on this process for years now. She really understands it backwards and forwards. And she has helped thousands of authors go through this process. But none of those people had these templates that we've created because they're brand new. We're just introducing them for the first time. Now, this sale is going to run through Friday night at midnight. And uh, Friday night at midnight, all of the special pricing is going to go away. So, again, things will cost $57 each instead of $39 for the whole shooting match. So I think if you have any interest in this topic or you have a blog or you want to start a blog or you've been wondering why am I writing a book and then stopping and writing my blog, that doesn't make sense. Can I do all of this together? I think you should go over to the sales page at thebookdesigner.com slash blog a book and check it out. All the information on the product is there in detail, all the templates, uh, all the information you would need. Our products, as always, are 100% guaranteed. You have absolutely no risk. And considering we're giving you all this free stuff anyway, there's very little risk involved. If you were even thinking about acquiring one of our $57 templates, you know, this just got a lot simpler, this decision, because we're going to actually just give it to you. So uh, $39, I think, represents uh, one of the best deals we've ever offered on any product uh, in the whole history of our firm. And uh, I'm very excited about it. I think it's going to generate a lot of new books that wouldn't have existed otherwise and just make people's life a lot easier. So that's the offer. It's the complete set of templates with the 59-page instructional guide, Nina's Blogging Basic for Authors ebook, uh, that uh, How to Blog a Book teleseminar, the interview with me, the video interview we did on Skype that's really fun and very educational, and a complete two-way print and ebook template designed just for bloggers, a total of $170.99 worth of content for $39. Okay, that's a fantastic deal. I've been answering a lot of questions. We're coming up on the one hour mark. And uh, kudos to you, Nina. 
great piece of timing. And I want to make sure that we answer these questions. So, Nina, I'm going to throw some of these questions to you, if you don't mind. That's fine. And we can do them right now. Um, for instance, uh, Anne has a question. Why do you need to be so specific about your reader? In the case of a spiritual book, it really could be anybody, right? Uh, anybody is not a good market target market <laughs> because <clears throat> it's too broad. If to really write for a market, you have to know exactly who that book is for, and so it, it's very important to hone it down to a specific person. So if it's a general spirituality book that's going to be really hard to sell. There's so many general spirituality books out there. That's a big market and a big category. So you need to, to figure out what kind of transformation they want or what their pain point is and, and address that, address one thing. And, and you're going to have a much higher likelihood of selling a lot of books that way. But it's like saying I'm writing a, you know, a book and it's for everyone. That, that just doesn't fly. And it won't fly with a publisher. And so if you self-publish, it shouldn't fly with you because you're the publisher, and publishers will not accept that as a market. This book is for everyone. Okay, thank you for that. Um, uh, several people have asked about uh, getting more help with booking a blog or blogging a book, and I wanted to, I'm going to put in the chat window here Nina's email address, because Nina does offer uh, help for people who are stuck or want to just talk about this process. So that's in the chat yes. window. I'm also going to put the uh, URL for the sales page in there so people can just click it. Uh, Joel, can you also packing. put in um, Joel, can you also put in there uh, the URL for howtoblogabook.com because they may want to go over there and read some off the blog. Yes, and there's a lot of information on this whole process on Nina's blog, howtoblogabook.com. I put the URL for the sales page in there. And, uh, and of course, there's the book. There's also the book, the How to Blog a Book. Is, uh, really excellent resource. There have been a number of questions about from fiction authors, Nina, about will this process work for them? Yeah, it will. It, it is much more difficult for novelists to blog a book. Um, the reason why is because novels are not written in, you know, typically in small chunks like nonfiction. Nonfiction lends itself to post-sized bits. But there are novelists and memoirists who are blogging books. They are uh, learning to break their chapters down into scenes and vignettes and description, all of that, as I said. Um, so it will work, and I'll just reiterate that the, the novelists I've talked to, talk to have said that they become better writers because they are forced to compel the reader into a bit of dialogue and out of the bit of dialogue, and that's one blog post, and then into a bit of description, um, and then out of that, and then into um, the introduction of a character and out of it. And so their book is, is a series, every chapter is a series of arcs that are constantly working to compel the reader. And so they say it, it actually improves their writing. Excellent. Now, I did get a question from somebody who's familiar with our templates, and they want to know if the template we're including is a one-time use. And it is a single title license, uh, Jeff, although we have a very reasonably priced upgrade mechanism. If you want to take this template and upgrade it to a multi-use template, uh, you can just go to our site and uh, go to the licensing options, and you'll see there's an upgrade uh, there that you can just buy the upgrade. Okay. So um, Drew wants to know, Nina, what's a good way to figure out your keywords? I would look at, I'm assuming you mean for your book, not for your blog, but it's sort of the same at this point. Um, but I would look specifically at what are you writing about. And people get very... Uh, stressed out, I guess, about keywords. 
And really, search engine optimization and keywords can be a very organic process. If you know exactly what you're writing about, you can make yourself a list of the you know five or ten top topics you write about. Um, or that your book includes, uh, and those become your keywords. And you can do the keyword research on them, but you really need to be careful that you aren't kind of manipulating or making it very difficult for you to write your book or, or blog your book because you are forcing yourself to use words that don't work so well for you. I suggest just figuring out exactly what your book is about, come up with that list, and use those words as much as you can. Good one. All right. Uh, Jeff also wants to know, do you import your mind map into Scrivener? I do. I use FreeMind um, and I import the PDF of it in. I, I don't know of a way to import one that you know you can actually keep using. Um, Scrivener, of course, has Scapel, which um, you can use, but I don't know that you can actually use Scapel in Scrivener. I think you have to do the same thing and import like a PDF, but I could be totally wrong about that. But I do import that. Great. And I and I import them. I would add, I import that just for for regular blogging. I will make a mind map for you know the month or for you know my my, my blog plan, uh, just for general blogging, and I will import that as well. Okay, um, let's see. I wanted to mention a lot of people were looking for, uh, there was one slide, Nina, the seven things you need to do before you uh, blog your book. Yes. There was a problem on the slide. It was misnumbered, and a lot of people started writing and saying, where's number four? And uh, there was oh. a number four, but the problem is it actually was a list of seven items, but four was missing, so it ran one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. But all seven are there. They just don't have the right numbers. So sorry yes, about, sorry about that up on the slide. But number four was definitely there. Thank um, you. Sorry about that. And um, several people, Nina, have asked about uh, finding or identifying readers or the market for memoirs. So for memoir, you really need to uh, be very clear on what your what your subject is and what your themes are you know what is the transformation you're you're talking about in your memoir because a memoir is usually a transformative journey um, and it's it's a extraordinary it's a extraordinary story of about an ordinary person and so what is that story what what's the foundation of that story what what subject are you writing about and what themes are running through you know you might have one or two themes once you know that you can then begin to target people who are interested in those themes and those topics. Okay, so if you are doing an eat, pray, love, you know, then tra people who like to travel or women who like to travel and who are on a spiritual journey or interested in spirituality would be your target market, right? But if your memoir is about coping with cancer, uh, let's say breast cancer, I don't know why I'm going with all women's topics here, but maybe because I'm a woman, but if, it, if it's about dealing with with breast cancer, you would then be, you know, targeting women who have breast cancer or who have had family members with breast cancer. So you can see how, you know, that's how you go. If, if you're a man writing a memoir and it's about, you know, your 10 years living on a dude ranch, then you're looking at people who like horses, right? You're looking at men in a certain age range who are interested in out, outdoors and horses, that, that, so that sort of thing. That's how you're looking at it to find that target market. Well, thank you, Nina. That's great. Now, I've got a technical question. I'm going to take this one, and this is from Al. He says, Word seems to have problems with extensive page editing compared to uh, Adobe products. Can your tools be integrated into those types of tools? Okay, well, Al, that's very true. Microsoft Word was designed as a business communications tool, not for doing layout or uh, graphic design or book publishing. However, Word has become, an, become more and more capable over the years. And uh, due to the genius of my partner, Tracy Atkins, we've been able to actually um, make Microsoft Word produce quite good-looking books. They are not the same quality as a book that you would produce with Adobe InDesign or Quark Express 
that's a professional level graphic design layout program because they're really different. However, the templates really work quite well for many authors. It depends on you know your book, your audience, and what your aspirations are. And sometimes it depends on your budget because with our template, for instance, the one included in this package, you can format and typeset your book that would normally cost hundreds or thousands of dollars if you hired me or somebody like me to do it for you. So the, the templates are Microsoft Word templates. Um, they will work fairly well in pages, the uh, word processor layout program from Apple. Uh, they'll probably open up in open office, but uh, you would need somebody that can open a Microsoft Word file. So they're not intended to replace a layout program, but they are very adequate for many, many people. Okay, so going back to uh, questions. Um, oh, well, that's great, Don. I hope you do do it. Uh, let's see. Here's from Sandra. Well, she needs to know about, I had this question from a couple of people, Nina. Do you have any uh, uh, quick uh, uh, directions for people who don't have a blog but want to start one and don't know where to start starting their blog? Yeah. So they may not like my answer so much, though. I recommend that you start with WordPress.org, not WordPress.com. WordPress.com is the free version of WordPress. I think WordPress is really the, the premium platform out there. Most professional bloggers are using WordPress. <clears throat> and I do not recommend free programs at all because or free platforms because they typically limit you uh, in what you can do. They limit the um, amount of uh, automation you can put in, which in WordPress would be plugins. They may limit your ability to have ads if you want them, and they will likely limit your ability to develop a mailing list. And so these are problems. And plus, they um, you have no say over your hosting company. And uh, if they change the rules, you have no say over that. So what I want for you is to have your own home in cyberspace where you make the rules about what goes on in that home. And all the traffic is going to your residence, only your residence, not to some condominium complex, which is kind of what it's like if you're on a free, free platform. So I suggest WordPress.org. And uh, that means that you need to um, get hosting, you know, purchase hosting with a hosting company. And you may very likely, if you're not techie, need a developer. And if you need um, assistance with that, um, I can put you in touch with a developer who will be happy to set you up. I have someone who works at a much lower rate than some others. But I also have other developers who are higher priced but do do specialty work. So um, in any case, that's my recommendation, is that you start out with WordPress.org, because otherwise you're going to have to change it. If you go to Blogger or TypePad or something, you know, in the end, you're going to want to be on WordPress, and it's going to have to be converted. It's going to cost you more money. OK, here's another question we got a couple of times, Nina. And this is from Ed. For a nonfiction book, do you think it's necessary to blog the book in the exact order that the book will be published in, or could you move around based on subsections as long as the post made sense uh, when looked at by itself? You could move, you could blog in, you know, sort of a, with, without that plan, without, you know, just blog whatever sections you feel inclined to blog or for whatever reason you feel you want to blog those sections at a certain time. Um, as long as it makes sense, because you know, if you have a nonfiction sort of related blog, you could be blogging on anything that's related to your topic. However, it doesn't get you these that set that it doesn't get your reader engaged in the same way. It doesn't get your reader in there wanting to turn the page, wanting to find out what the next installment is of your book. And when they know it's a book being blogged, you know, I suggest, suggest actually saying so. When they know that's happening, they get much more invested in showing up and reading uh, the next part. Um, I also think it's an easier way to write your book, is to just write it in order and blog it in order. So that would be my suggestion. Great. Okay. Um, 
So here's one from Amy. She says, I love working in WordPerfect. I'm hooked on the reveal codes, which nothing else can beat. Can I work in WordPerfect and then convert it? I don't know the answer to that question. Do you? Yeah, well, WordPerfect will output a Word document, Amy. So um, my suggestion would be that, uh, you know, the, the templates that are in the How to Blog a Book template kit, uh, you can use those in Word. I bet WordPerfect will open a Word document. So I would definitely try it. And I'd be interested in what happens because I'm pretty sure that the uh, formats will open both on both sides, both on WordPerfect and Word. Because these two programs have been around a very long time. As a matter of fact, WordPerfect was the very first computer program I ever bought back in the, all right, I'm going to say it out loud now, uh, 1980s. Uh, when I bought my first computer, I bought WordPerfect, I think it was 3.1. And that's what I wrote my first uh, book on, actually. And I uh, published it myself in 1986. You know, self-publishing is actually fairly old. So, I, yes, Amy, I think it will work fine. Okay, now we had a number of people um, ask about Facebook, Nina, and this is kind of interesting. Several people wanted to know if they could just blog on Facebook and use Facebook as their blog. And uh, I advise people against this, but I'd like to hear your take on it. Yeah, I would advise against it. Um, it's um, Whether you're using a profile or a page, on Facebook, you're going to find it very difficult to get the readership you want, number one, but in particular on a page, which you should be doing this on a page. Um, number two, Facebook changes its algorithms and its rules all the time and you are totally reliant on that. And I can tell you that if you're publishing these on Facebook, you're going to have to promote them. You're going to have to pay to promote them for them to get seen. It's just getting very hard for to get anything seen on Facebook, which is, does not mean you shouldn't be using it as a platform element. But I, I, as I said before, I don't recommend publishing your content, especially for a book, anywhere other than on your own site where you control it. I do know of someone who published very long like notes on Facebook and turned them into a book. But I just don't recommend it. Joel, you can add in whatever you wanted to say about it. Yeah, well, I think that one of the other key things for any content creator is go look at Facebook's terms of service. If I'm not mistaken, anything you post there, Facebook acquires rights to that content. I don't think that's a really good situation for any author concerned about their content. I mean, if I post it on my blog, I can copyright it. I am the only one who has any rights to that material at all. But all of these social sites, you know, with their 30 to 40 page terms of service contracts that you basically sign and agree to when you law, agree to open an account there, you know, they will acquire rights to your content. And those rights include reproduction rights. Now, is Facebook taking your content and making books out of it? No, they're not. But, you know, it just doesn't seem like a very tenable position to me of anybody creating content. I've also had a number of questions about GoDaddy. Look, there's nothing the matter with GoDaddy. I happen to prefer other hosts for hosting my blogs, but uh, I still have domains registered there, and they do a huge business in domains, and they have uh, you know millions of people hosting websites on GoDaddy. So obviously, you know they're making a lot of people happy. There's a lot of web hosts out there, and you can use the one that seems the best to you. I mean, uh, don't be put off for one reason or another from GoDaddy. I just choose to host my blogs elsewhere. Yeah, you know, and I started out on GoDaddy and um, for years I told people, I mean, after I switched, I told people not to use it, but um, a colleague of ours, uh, her, so, uh, someone related to her actually works at GoDaddy and she, she's an expert in self-publishing and she decided she would try it out to see like to help a couple of her clients create blogs and she found it very easy to go there and you know set up the hosting account and then just click the download and have a blog up and running so something to think about okay um, let's see uh, lots of questions about GoDaddy okay here's a good one um, 
And this is from Al. He wants to know how many followers or readers does it take to look really good if we want a conventional publisher to pick up a blog to book concept? So that's a very subjective um, thing. And um, a, small a small traditional publisher will take you um, with you know, a, a, s a small and growing readership. So let's say, well, I'll, for instance, when How to Blog a Book got picked up, my readership was not huge, even though I had number one Google status and all of that. It was not huge. I can't remember what it was at the time. But, um, you know, if, a small traditional publisher uh, will look to see if you have a growing readership, growing subscriber base, that sort of thing. Now, a mid-sized to a large publishing house is going to want something much greater. And by that, I mean that the, the large traditional publishing houses are going to want something in the, um, you know, probably in the uh, six figures or at least f five figures per month. So you're looking at much greater numbers for the big publishing houses. Now the middle, the medium-sized publishing houses are going to be a little more flexible. So, but you know, you're going to want to be having, I would think, a minimum of a uh, hundred. Uh, readers per day, so that gets you 3,000 per month. So that's going to probably be your starting point for the, you know, just above the small publishing houses to the, to the mid size, and the mid size are going to be, you know, 3,000 and up. But I'm just quoting something that is very random. But the, but I do know for the large publishing houses, they are looking for large numbers, and a lot of agents won't represent you if you don't have that. So you know, you're, you're looking definitely for for something in the uh, five five figure range per month. Okay, let's see. Can you do a WordPress blog on GoDaddy? Yes, no problem. Where do you host yours? I've typed this into the uh, uh, the answer question box. Bluehost.com or on WPEngine.com. What do you use, Nina? Uh, I have just, uh, I have switched, just switched to, to WP, WP Engine. Engine. And before and that, before I was that on A2. Was on A2. Okay. For some reason, some I'm reason getting, I'm an, getting echo. an echo. Here's a question from Drew. Uh, she says she needs some legal advice on some issues relating to confidentiality in her memoir. Do we have someone who has reasonable rates? Well, I'd like to recommend uh, Helen Sedwick, and I'm going to type her name here. Helen is uh, not only an attorney, but she is also a self-published author. And she's also the author of the self-publisher's legal handbook. Buying the book might answer your question a lot more cheaply, uh, but she is very sensitive to the um, uh, uh, issues related to self-publishing. Now, Helen also writes a regular column for my blog at thebookdesigner.com, and all her contact information is on, on the blog there. But I'm going to give you her name right here, Helen Sedwick, and uh, she's really super. Okay, um, here's a question from Deborah. If you're just starting out, how do you get your blog noticed? Is it just by posting often? So it's, so a it's a combination of things. Of things. Uh, Joel, are you Joel, still, are hearing, you still an hearing an echo when I speak? When I speak? No. Okay, so it's okay, just so me, it's which just is kind of annoying. Kind of annoying but anyway, anyway um, um, it's a combination, it's a combination of, of blogging, blogging often, often and, 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 and consistently. consistently. Because, because that, that note, note, every time you muted new content on your blog, the uh, bots and crawler and Yahoo, whatever, Yahoo, these electronic, electronic, uh, electronic, electronic programs, programs come, come along, along and they, and they catalog, catalog that, th that content and the keywords, and that drives your blog up in the search engine results pages, making it more discoverable, more findable, so people looking for your information can more easily find your site. But beyond that, you really do have to share it on the social networks. Uh, and I suggest sharing it on as many social networks as you can. So you, 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 know, you may want to use some programs. I use Social Oomph, for instance. Um, but there are lots of programs out there to help you share your content on a frequent basis. 
and uh, yeah, but it's as easy as just going to the bottom of your blog post and hitting, you know, your sharing tools, so share to Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and doing it several times a day. But in any case, you do need to share as well because that is how you're going to drive traffic back. And uh, the more people who are clicking on your links, the more people who are going to share. And the more places your, your content shows up, uh, as a URL link and the title of your post, the more likelihood you have that people are going to click through and read it and maybe share it with their, their listeners. Joel, did you want to add to that? Okay, I've got a few that I just want to run through here, Nina. Uh, a couple of people asked if the templates okay. work okay. on... Can you hear me okay? I can't. I just I can't. really have a bad echo. Bad echo. Okay. And it's delayed all of a sudden. All right. Well, uh, let's see if we can get through this, and then we're going to wrap it up anyway because we're hitting our timeline. Uh, somebody want to know if the templates will work on a Mac? Yes, they will work on a Mac if you own Microsoft Word. Somebody else said, what if I recently purchased your two-way template? Lori, that was a different design. We've created this template specifically for this product, so you didn't buy this one. Um, but thank you for being a customer. And here's an important one. Irene says, the professionals at CreateSpace told me you can't create a professional-looking book on Microsoft Word because they want to charge me to format it. Do you agree with that? And Irene, no, I don't agree with that. And we have had literally thousands of authors produce beautiful-looking books with our templates on CreateSpace. So I would take their advice with a grain of salt. You will get a better looking book if you use professional level tools, but the books that people are able to create with our templates are really quite beautiful and they work perfectly. So uh, no, don't buy any more than you need. If you need a professional looking book, then you're gonna have to hire a professional. If you don't think you need that for your particular book project, get a template, save yourself the time and money, and see how that works, and uh, I think you'll be happy with it. Uh, okay, so we're, we're hitting the limit on um, our time here. There are some unanswered questions. I'm going to once again put uh, Nina's address in here. If you have questions that didn't get answered uh, during this webinar, uh, I apologize for that. I typed as fast as I possibly could, and we've answered a lot live here. But if you have any more questions, uh, just email Nina at, Nina at ninaamir.com. Uh, if you have a question about our template products, you can go over to our site and use the help, uh, the contact there, or you can email to support at bookdesigntemplates.com. I want to thank everyone for attending the webinar today. It was really, really educational. I want to thank Nina Amir specifically for doing a great job putting this together. I think this uh, How to Blog a Book template product is going to help a lot of authors get those books out. So that's what we've got for you today. Thanks for coming in. I really appreciate it. Go over and check out the sales page right now if you haven't already, and that's at thebookdesigner.com slash blog dash a dash book. And, um, you know, take advantage of this amazing offer while it's available because on Friday night at midnight, it's all going away and all the prices go back to normal. So thanks again, everyone. Thanks to Nina. And I'll see you next time.